מזלזל בהדפסה של זה, ואיך אותו בכל הפרוכס. האם זה באמת סגולה בדוקה? הסגולה ללמוד בזה? ערב טוב וגוד איבנינג אבריוואן, אנחנו נמצאים בזרע שמשון. This week we're in a special section of the Zer Shimshon called In Yone Teshuva. It appears in the Sefer right after uh, his commentary, the Zer Shimshon's commentary on Parshas Achare Mos, which of course is the Parsha we'll read, God willing, this coming Shabbos. Um, Parshas Achare Mos describes in great detail the Avodah of Yom Kippur, the service in the Mishkan or the Beis HaMikdash on, uh, on, on Yom Kippur, Uh, and therefore, it's very relevant to talk about inyone tshuva, matters of repentance and tshuva, which of course is the theme of, uh, is the focus on Yom Kippur. And so that's why the Zer Shimshon put this section here. And we're going to look at Os Dalid, section four, in that, uh, in that section, inyone tshuva, and in, in the Sefer, in the second volume of uh, the Zer Shimshon's Perish on Chumash, it's on Daf Pei. Hey, uh, with that uh, explanation, let's, uh, let's jump right in. So the Zer Shimshon starts with a, with a very uh, fascinating and in some ways complicated uh, little piece of Gemara from Masecha Shabbos. It says as follows, Shabbos Perak Aleph, in the first Perak of Masecha Shabbos, Tana Debei Eliyahu, a b'risa is taught, was taught in the yeshiva, uh, in the academy of Eliyahu. Now there is a machlokas, and anytime you see Tana Debei Eliyahu, a reference to the Academy of Elio, you should know there's a machlokas as to whether or not that is an academy where they focused on bracelets that were given over by Elio Hanavi. That's one explanation. Or that there was, uh, that there was a, uh, a, 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 a Tana named uh, Elio, and that's why it was called Tana Debe Elio. Uh, but in any case, uh, we're, he, here is what was taught. Here's the bracelet that was taught. Masa B'Talmud Echad, there was a happening, an occurrence, an incident with one particular student, Sheshana Harbe, who learned a, a lot, Vikara Harbe, and he also studied Torah Shebichsav. So Shana, sorry, Sheshana Harbe, he learned, he, learned, uh, he learned what we would call Mishnah or Torah Shebalpeh, the, the, the core of Torah Shebalpeh, uh, and he also learned uh, Vikara Harbe, and he also learned uh, Tanakh, a, 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 to a, to a great degree, um, and he died at an early age. And the Gemara tells us that his wife was distraught over the death of her husband, and she took his tefillin, uh, and she went around, the, the Zer Shemeshun says, etc., but I'll tell you what the Gemara, you know, I'll fill in the little gap there. Um, the Gemara tells us that she went around to the yeshiva and to the base medrashes, And she asked everyone, holding his tefillin, her husband's tefillin, and uh, in, in uh, her hands, uh, asked, "Well, how could this happen? Uh, my husband uh, studied so much; he's constantly involved in studying, and he was constantly involved in uh, also serving Talmidei uh, Chachamim." The Gemara says, "Shimush Talmidei Chachamim," and 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 these are the tefillin that he put on every day. And how could he die early? And as we'll see in a moment, and she quoted the the pasuk. Um, Uh, Orech of, of uh, uh, the pasuk escapes for a moment, but we'll see it in, in a second. Uh, th- this is the length of your days, Orech Yomim, and, and you'll and, and you'll have length of days if you involve yourself in, in the study of Torah. Vechi uh, Chayecha uh, Orech Yomecha. Sorry. And so, how could he die young? That was basically the question that she went around asking everyone. So the Zera Shimshon continues. Lo machzira davar, and nobody could answer her. No one knew what to answer to this uh, poor woman. Pam achas nisarachti etz law. So the brisa continues. One time I uh, was a guest in her home. So this, we're assuming this is, let's say, Eliyahu, uh, the, the, the Tana, uh, was a guest in her home. And uh, he began to ask her questions. He wanted to get enough information to be able to explain to her why her husband died, because not only was she grief-stricken, of course, over the loss of her husband, but she also had this, this uh, challenge, so to speak, uh, to Hashem, to her emuna and to her bitachon. How, how, how could this happen to my husband, who, was, who, from her perspective, was such a righteous individual? So he began to ask questions. So one of the questions he asked, the Zer Shimshon quotes, uh, during the 
uh, the, the days of whiteness, meaning the days if a woman is a nido, there's actually machlokas, is this talking about when a woman's a zava, or is this talking about when a woman's a nido? But in any case, during the seven days uh, of uh, when, a, when a woman is wearing white clothing to make sure uh, that there's no kind of uh, a problem with nidos, mahu uh, eslech, how did he conduct himself with you? So the woman answered, ochil imi, he would eat with me, vishosa imi, and he would drink with me, vyoshen imi bekir of basar. And uh, he would sleep in the same bed as me, bekir of basar, with closeness of flesh. And the gemara, the rashi, it means, it means that, uh, uh, that in those days, usually they were in very hot climates, and, and, uh, and so they would often sleep without clothing, so they would sleep without clothing. But he did ne- it never, ever occurred to him to think about anything else, meaning to think about being together. Um, but, he, but he was with me in every way during that seven-day period, during that time. The Amarti, except, except he wasn't with me intimately. Sorry, he was with me in terms of eating together and drinking together and doing everything together and even sleeping in the same bed together without clothing, um, as, as, again, as was people's usual custom, but there was no actual physical intimacy and certainly no intercourse. The low also datal of Racher, and it, nothing else ever occurred to him during that time. The Amarti law, and I said to her, Baruch HaMokom Sheharago, we need to bless Hashem who killed him, which of course is a very hard thing to say, but, but he wanted to be very clear that this, that this man who she couldn't understand what possible sin he could have committed um, actually, uh, actually had committed a serious sin. And Hashem did not show favoritism because of his Torah learning. Now there's different ways that the Mofortium understand that, but the, but the basic way that the, 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 the pshat, so to speak, is that Hashem um, carried out the din, carried out the law with this man, and didn't say, oh, because he studied so much Torah, uh, therefore I won't pay attention, therefore I'll overlook the Aveira that he did in accustoming himself to be with his wife during this time in the ways that he did accustom himself. Uh, Ad Khan, until here is a quote from the Gemara. So the reason I said it's, a, it's a, both a fascinating and a complicated piece of Gemara is because obviously you see that the whole psychological component of a woman who's grief-stricken over the loss of her husband, but also is making a claim and going around from the yeshivas and base medrashas and, and Bate Kadesios and synagogues and shuls and saying, my husband didn't deserve to die. How, how, how could this happen? How could this happen? He was such a righteous person. He was such a righteous individual, so committed, so devoted. So, it, so there's the psychological component, you might say a theological slash philosophical um, component, uh, in addition to that, it's not, it's not 100% clear in the Mephorshim exactly what he did wrong. There's a lot of discussion. Again, as I mentioned, was the woman a Zub? Was she a Nido? What, what, was exact, what were the exact halachos that, that the man violated? So there's a lot of discussion there. But you'll see the Zer Shimshon has his own three questions that he's about to pose on this Gemara. And, and we'll also see uh, as he develops his thinking and his idea here to explain this Gemara, what it has to do with us and teshuva and the to bring home uh, again uh, for a parsha that talks about the avoda on Yom Kippur, the parsha of Achrimos. So in the next paragraph, Kasha, this is difficult. Why did his wife, why did the man who died's wife uh, take his tefillin below devarim acherim and not other th- other, any other thing? Why did the wife choose to walk around with her husband's tefillin and ask and pose this question as to how could he die and why did he die? Uh, why did she carry around his tefillin as opposed to something else that he did mitzvahs with? She could have taken his talis. She could have taken a safer that he was very diligent and learns all the time. There are other things that she could have gone around with. Why did she specifically take his tefillin around? That's question one. The ode and another question, my time below, hayashum odem achzira davar. How come no one was able to respond to her in any way? Uh, if we imagine in our mind, she's going around to shuls and to, and to, and to, and to base medrashas and yeshivas. There's Rabbanim, there's Rebbeim, there's great Talmidei Chachamim. How come no one was able to respond and, and answer her questions in any way? And what exactly did the Tana mean uh, when he said to her, Hashem did not show favoritism uh, because of his Torah. What exactly did that mean, uh, and, and, and how are we to understand? So we move, the Zerah Shimshon begins to answer these questions in the next paragraph. 
V'yesh lomar, and we can say, She'ha'isha hazos ha'yosa bo'a b'tayna, this woman was coming with a claim, Mishum d'chsiv, because of the Pasuk that's written in Mishle, Ki hi chayecho ve'orech yomecho, because it, the Torah, chayecho is your life, ve'orech yomecho, and the length of your days. And, and that's the Pasuk, according to the Gemara, uh, that's the Pasuk that she was quoting to people. This is my husband devoted himself to the study of Torah, and as we said, to the to the to the server to serving Talmud Chachamim, and to, he was constantly in, involved in the world of Torah, and that should have been a guarantee of of him having a lengthy life, both in this world and the next world. Chai Olam Hazeva, Chai Olam Haba, and and so she would quote this Pasuk from Mishlei and say, "How could he die as such a young man?" and in order that you shouldn't say. Okay, yes, it's true that he did learn a lot. Perhaps his heart wasn't full in his learning. He wasn't fully integrated with his learning. And therefore he fell into some, uh, some terrible sin, and that's what led to him being punished with dying early. And this pasuk that you're quoting, uh, that the wife was quoting about, it is the, it is your, uh, it is your life and the length of your days. This is referring to someone who fulfills the uh, laws and precepts of the Torah. Not someone who just learns about that. As Tosis explains, and Meseches Kedushin va'ayin shom, and look there. So the woman understood that if she just went around saying, my husband was such a Torah scholar, my husband was devoted to Torah study, people might say, okay, that's a wonderful thing, that's a beautiful thing, and he received so much merit for the fact that he was so devoted to Torah study. But the Pasuk you're quoting about a long life, that is talking about people who not only study Torah, but who are meticulous about keeping the mitzvahs of the Torah. And uh, apparently, you know, there's something maybe you didn't know or something you weren't aware of, of sins that he committed because he wasn't keeping the Torah uh, to the same, with the same level of dedication in which he studied the Torah. And therefore, that they might, people might say to the woman, that, and that's why uh, he died the, the way that he did. So the Zer Shemshon continues, Mishum Hachi, because of this, she would walk around with his tefillin, Klomar, to say, She would say, these are the tefillin that he wore every second of the day. He would not go even Dalit Amos without wearing tefillin. It's well known that in the time of the Gemara and earlier times, in ancient times, people would wear their tefillin all day. Uh, and, and only later, and only in modern times, was the, was the uh, Psaq and, and the Hanhaga, the, the uh, decision made, to wear our tefillin for a limited amount of time, not because that's a, of course, that's, that's not as good a thing to do. That's a much worse thing to do. However, uh, people were, were uh, the longer they wore their tefillin, the more it was found that they weren't having the right the thoughts in mind. They forgot about wearing the tefillin and they went about doing things, conducting their regular activities without thinking, focusing on the kedusha of wearing the tefillin. And so we only wear our tefillin for a limited time when we dive in chakras and, we're, and we have to focus on the fact that we're wearing tefillin during that time. But this man used to wear, as many others did at that time, used to wear his tefillin uh, all day. The im and if so, i efshur shehisiach tato. Because he was wearing his tefillin all day, it's impossible that he distracted himself from the Kedush of Torah, the Nafal Bechet, and, and fell into some unknown hidden Avera that I didn't know about. Shahari Mitzvah's tefillin, he shalo yasiach mehem, because it is one of the parts of the mitzvah of wearing tefillin that you have to constantly think about them and remind yourself that you're wearing uh, them and conduct yourself accordingly as a person who is wearing tefillin. That's why you'll see people touch their tefillin and, and they remind themselves that they're wearing tefillin so that they shouldn't, God forbid, start uh, getting involved in, in talking or kalis rosh or levity or acting as if, uh, as if they're not wearing the tefillin. No, they remind themselves constantly. We're continuing at the top of the next column. The ode, kisha odom, ose kolmam, ose kocho, when a person is doing everything he possibly can, lishmor atzmo menachet, to guard himself from, uh, from committing a sin, from Shamayim, he is given a special uh, assistance. And he's given special shmir, special protection. As it's written, this is a Pasuk in Tehillim, 
Sofa Russia Litzadik, a Russia. Uh, waits for a tzaddik, or Russia waits for every opportunity to uh, make a tzaddik stumble and to attack a tzaddik and to impugn a tzaddik and to do anything he can to bring the tzaddik down, v'chulei, etc. And the Pasuk continues, Hashem lo ya'azvenu biyodo, but Hashem does not forsake the tzaddik in the Russia's hand, meaning Hashem protects the tzaddik. Not only this, this means not only from of some kind of physical attack, but even if the rush is coming up with a scheme to make the tzaddik commit to an avera and to, and to bring down his spiritual level, Hashem protects him from the, from the Russia. The Od Ksiv, and there's another Pasuk in Tehillim, Hashem Yishmor from Yikol Ra, Hashem uh, guards a righteous person from all uh, bad things, again, both physical and spiritual, the Hulei, Ragle Hasid of Yishmor, another Pasuk that Hashem uh, guards the, the feet of uh, his, his uh, pious ones, and so these psu can clearly uh, demonstrate that, that there's special siyata dishmaya, special support and assistance from heaven for the truly righteous and the truly committed to protect them from doing averas and doing chatoyim. The lo hoyashum adam shiyodeya lo shum chait. And there was no one in all of the shuls and Batei Midrashim and yeshivas that the, that, that the woman went to, that the widow went to, there was no one who actually knew of this man committing a sin. This truly was a man who apparently was an extremely righteous and fully committed, fully sincere individual. He studied Torah. He was committed to Torah. And the wife took the tefillin around to say he wore his tefillin all day and he conducted himself like a person who was wearing tefillin all day. And that's what he constantly was thinking about and doing. So the Zer Shimshon is saying that's why no one could reply to her. And that's why she brought the tefillin around. She was making a very specific point about this man's very high level of dedication and commitment and, uh, and no one could respond because actually no one knew. There was no one who said, oh, you know, he acted that way. But sometimes on, during the break or in the, in, when, when, every, you know, when people left the base medrash or whatever, he did this, he did that. No, no one had anything bad to say about this person. No one could respond to this woman. Until the Tana said, I arranged to be invited uh, to her home, to her family's uh, home, uh, and then that led to him asking her questions and, and him saying to her, uh, we have to accept Hashem's judgment and bless Hashem over his judgment in, the, in this case. Flomar, meaning, since this man, uh, who, yes, it's true, did many, many beautiful, wonderful things and, and, and studied Torah and committed himself to a Torah lifestyle. But nonetheless, this man put himself in a situation in which he did not stay far away from a possibly sinful type of situation. Then we can no longer say that Hashem gave him special protection to keep him away from doing a hate. Sha'adaraba, just the opposite. Hu hayalola harchik atmo min ha'avera. He needed to constantly make sure that he was keeping himself distant from any kind of avera situation. Umin hakior, and from any kind of uh, um, inappropriate or, or disgusting kind of situation. Vahadomelo, and similar to it. Vahashta shalo osa mishmeres le mishmarta shal Torah. And now that we see that he himself put himself in, in situations where he wasn't guarding, he wasn't protecting the, the, the uh, protection that the Torah uh, gives to us and, 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 and requires us to follow. And he put himself in a situation uh, in which he was actually close to doing an Avera. Again, the Tana is not saying he did in a, a specific Avera. The Tan is saying he put himself in situations based on the wife's own testimony and own admissions. The wife conceded about how he acted in, in the certain in, in, at a time when he should not have been in in, uh, in in bed with her, and certainly in the situation we described. Uh, he put himself in that situation, and that shows that he was not being meticulous about protecting himself from uh, from from situations of a possible hate. And, and, and just the opposite, he actually put himself close to doing a chet. Then Hashem does not give him the special protection we talked about before uh, in such a case. 
because he's no longer in the category of Hasidim. This is a reference to the Pasuk we quoted before, Ragle Hasid of Yishmor. Hashem guards the, the, the steps and the, and the feet of, the, of his pious ones. He's not in that, he's not in that category. And therefore, it is, it, we have to concede that it's possible that he actually did um, commit a serious, uh, serious fate that led to his untimely uh, passing, his untimely demise. Zer Shimshon continues, As we say in the Yalkut Shimoni on Tehillim, Al Mizrach Mimar, on the Pasuk that says, as is the distance from east. Uh, as the as the distance that east is from west, that's the phrase in the pasuk. And so the Yalkut Shimoni comments, uh, um, that is how far we have to distance ourselves uh, from our sins. People should not dive into Hashem and say, Rachmona Yarchit Yasano Minachet. Hashem, make us distant from sin. Elo rachmona yarchik chet minon. But rather, Hashem, distance sin minon from us. Very important comment and a very important but subtle distinction. The Yalkut Shimoni is saying when we dive into Hashem, we shouldn't say to Hashem, keep us far away from sin. Rather, we should say, keep sins far away from us. What's the difference? The Zer Shimshon continues. We learn from this statement in the Yalkut Shimoni, It's the obligation of a person to keep himself or herself away from, from sinful, from sinful situations or, or the possibility of committing a chet. And then HaKadosh Baruch Hu will uh, distance the sin from us, meaning we can't say to Hashem, uh, keep us away from sin. We have the obligation to keep ourselves away from a sin. And when Hashem sees that we're doing that, then he will give us that assistance that the Zer Shimshon talked about, that special divine siyata deshmaya to help us keep sins away from us once he sees that we're doing our best to keep away from uh, questionable and, and, and bad type of situations. And why? And Hashem will keep the chet away from people because He sees that we're already keeping ourselves from from the sin. And even though this man studied Torah a lot, everyone conceded that he was studying Torah constantly. Nevertheless, lo nasa panim Torah. Hashem did not show a special favoritism that would have been inappropriate in this case to the uh, amount of Torah this man studied, to protect him from uh, uh, possibly uh, sinful situations, because he himself did not keep a uh, proper watch on this. And his karev, and he became close by Mesha Hayalolah Hisrachek in situations from which he kept, could have kept himself distant. This man transgressed a clear, at the very least, he transgressed a clear iser de Rabbanon in the way he conducted himself during the wife's uh, days, uh, clean days. Uh, and a person who violates the words of the Chachamim Chai of Misa, we, the, there's a Chazal in, in several places where, we sit, where it states that a person who violates, transgresses against the words of the Chachamim uh, is Chai of Misa, Dixiv. Uh, Pasuk in Koheles, who porates geder yishchenu nochash, a person who breaks the fence, meaning uh, the way Chazal understand that a person who violates a fence that the Rabbanon created to keep us away from doing chatam, a person who breaks through that fence and isn't careful about it, uh, a sna- he will be bitten by a snake, meaning he's high of Misa. So, so um, let's um, step back for a moment and understand the full uh, theme here that the Zer Shimshon developed. Basically, uh, he started with the Gemar and Masech, the Shabbos, which, as we mentioned, uh, is if you if you look, I encourage you to look at that at that uh, little piece of Gemar there, that sugya that talks about um, how people should conduct themselves in, in, in different kinds of situations and make sure to stay away from uh, from the possibility of inappropriate situations. And this man apparently didn't do that, and he died, and the wife went around. And what, what was developed was that even though this, this person had done so many 
uh, excellent thing. So many mitzvot. So no, no, one, no one doubted that he was constantly involved in Torah study. No one doubted that he was constantly involved in Shibush Tamir Chachamim. And when the wife went around, that's the whole point of the story in such detail. When the wife went around everywhere, no one could give her an answer and say, oh, it's because he did X or Y or Z. There was, there was, as far as anyone knew, there was no X or Y or Z. It was only in terms of his private conduct and the private, private conduct in his own home when his wife, in all innocence, it was Mesiach Lefitumo because she thought he... The fitumah, because she thought he actually was conducting himself appropriately. She said he never ever thought of doing anything wrong, and she talked about how he conducted himself. And that's when the man said to her, "There was something missing from his, something highly inappropriate about his conduct, and and that he put himself in that situation. That even if he didn't do something wrong in that particular situation, although he did violate uh, din de rabbona, that he didn't even if he didn't do anything worse than that, uh, it meant that he wasn't." He wasn't exceedingly careful about keeping himself away uh, and guarding himself from uh, situations that he shouldn't put himself in. And therefore, we no longer have a chazaka, so to speak. We no longer are entitled to make an assumption that in other situations, he also kept himself away. And therefore, possibly, we have to concede that he might have done something that people didn't know about in the shuls and the yeshivas uh, that brought about his his death at an early age. So, of course, the, the, the lesson to us and the Musr to us is we think about get ready for this coming Shabbos of Achrei Mos, which has the Avodon Yom Kippur, is that when we think about doing, you know, tshuva and we focus on that, not just during Yom Kippur, but throughout the year, um, we have to think about not just what we do and what we refrain from doing, although that's the most important thing to start with, but also what kinds of situations we're putting ourselves in and possibly what kinds of situations we're allowing ourselves to be in that we shouldn't be allowing ourselves uh, to be in those situations in order to be extra careful about protecting ourselves from Hatayim. And that, of course, is the goal that the Zer Shimshon is focused on. Yashukoch uh, to uh, everybody for participating uh, this week in the learning.